told my best friend that I regret getting married to my husband. Now he wants to divorce me. I'm in a big mess and need help. My husband filed divorce because he overheard me saying I regret it. I'm getting divorced. There's literally fire on the mountain in my life and in my marriage, and it all, all happened as a result of a single statement. My husband just filed for a divorce, and I just got to know about it right now. He's overreacting just because of a single statement I made. I don't know how he'll react when he finds out I cheated on him twice. He's angry that I told someone I regret our marriage. He wants to end our relationship because of that single statement. But only I know that there's actually more to everything. My name is Cassandra, and I'm 24 years old. I've been married for a year, and the name of my husband is Neil. Neil is 25 years old, and he's an accountant. I'm a housewife by choice, and that's because I don't want to work, and I can't work. That's because I got married immediately after college and had no time to process anything that happened. I'm trapped in this marriage, but I still don't want to divorce my husband because I know I'm jobless and will be screwed if I don't keep our marriage. I've been tired of this marriage for a very long time. Neil and I met in college and got married right after, but I regret getting married now. I wish I waited longer or even tried to delay it a little bit. I was young and naive and thought I was in love, so I rushed into things. Now everything irritates me and I'm done with pretending. He saw the signs and that's why he waited for the affirmation. I stopped trying to be a wife altogether and just decided to live my life without him included. I may have cheated on him once or twice, but I was drunk and things just happened. He doesn't know I cheated yet and I wanna make sure he never finds out because if he does, I'm literally doomed. I messed up again because I got so frustrated two weeks ago and I decided to call my best friend and just rant about how frustrated I was and how I was deeply tired of my marriage. I thought Neil had gone to work, but I ended up getting the shock of my life when I turned around and saw him standing at the doorway. I got very scared and didn't know what to do, so I just kept quiet. What made me more nervous was the fact that I knew how many bad things I told my best friend. I told her I was tired of the marriage and didn't want to carry on pretending. Our conversation was very carefree because I really believed that my husband wasn't at the house. I also told her that I regretted marrying him immediately after college and felt like he trapped me into the marriage. After I ended the call and turned around, I couldn't even open my mouth to speak. I was caught red-handed and had no choice than to keep quiet. Neil was so upset that his veins were showing on his face. I've never seen him that angry. I can't believe he got angry over something that little. What if he finds out I cheated on him twice? I'm very scared because I don't know what to expect and I don't want to lose him. That day we had a very long argument and he said a lot of hurtful things to me. I thought that would be the end of it, but just yesterday, I got to know that he's already filed for divorce. I thought he would cool off after some days, but the fact that he's still angry baffles me. I need help because I know this is just the calm before the storm. The knowledge of the other things I've done would make him very shocked. I'm tired of the marriage, but I don't want to lose my husband. I'll suffer if I divorce him. I'm jobless, and I have nothing to run back to. My parents would not accept me if I end up getting a divorce after a year of bring married. I can't handle the shame, and I don't want the stigma. When I said I needed space, I just wanted to have some fun, and that's all. I never imagined actually getting a divorce. I'm tired of the marriage, but I can't leave because of my finances. I don't love him anymore, but I can't leave him. I'm ready to stay married as long as I don't have to face the shame and stigma that comes with divorce. Please help me. Update one. I've been called so many unpalatable names that I've honestly lost count. Most of you are judging me so freely as if you really know me. I asked for help, not criticism, but I guess me putting this on here automatically gives people the right to insert their opinions whenever they want. Thanks to the very people that actually gave me advice, I was able to come up with a plan. I decided to win my husband back, even though that sounds very stupid. I'm even ashamed to type this. I'm trying to win my husband back. It sounds pathetic, but I don't mind being pathetic as long as it saves my marriage. First of all, I tried begging Neil and make him change his mind. I came up with a lot of stories and I tried to explain to him that I each just talking trash because I'd been frustrated. But Neil refused to listen to me. Instead of forgiving me like I hoped, he gave me an ultimatum and told me he wanted me out of the house as soon as possible. My biggest fear happened, guys. When I heard him say those words to me, I lost it completely. 
I don't want to be homeless and I don't want to end up broke, so I got desperate. I tried every trick in the book to finally get him to forgive me, but instead, it seemed like I angered him more. Just yesterday, the divorce papers arrived and he signed them immediately before handing it over to me. Yes, he signed them the moment he got them. I fell on my knees and cried my eyes out, but Neil ignored me like I was some sort of trash. Since he heard me saying I regret getting married to him, he doesn't let me sleep in our bedroom and he has stopped buying groceries and other house items. He doesn't even talk to me. I know that the only reason he's keeping me in the house is so he can have an upper hand in court. He wants our divorce to be finalized first so he doesn't have to pay a lot of money for spousal support if I'm homeless. He knows I'm broke and have nowhere to go and that might end up working against him in court. But even though I might get a big check from the divorce, I know it won't last me a long time. Without a sustainable job, I'll still end up broke. I'm so frustrated right now and I regret ever making that phone call that day. I got so desperate that I almost burnt the divorce papers. But I knew that would just be a foolish move. I'm desperate. A lot is going in. There's a lot of pressure from my parents because they've noticed that Neil has blocked them. Yes, he blocked everyone related to me. He even blocked me, his wife. I know he's planning to send me out soon. I cannot let that happen. I cannot lose my marriage. I had no structure before getting married, so I can't just get divorced without any structure too. I just wanted to have harmless fun. I didn't think it would end up biting me back. I've tried everything, including trying to get in bed with Neil, but all it brought me is embarrassment and insults. He doesn't even want to see me, and he's made that clear. Now, what I want to do is get him back by being a perfect housewife. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I have no choice. I'm keeping this marriage even though my pride will suffer in the end. Since he doesn't know about my cheating yet, I'm sure it will be easier to get him back. I need to act fast because there's only limited amount of time that I have to delay signing the papers. I can't delay forever, and I certainly can't ignore the divorce papers. Time is not on my side, but I certainly hope that the universe is. Update 2. I'm a fool, guys. I'm a fool and the universe is certainly not on my side. If anything, I've come to realize that the universe is actually against me at this point. I don't know what I've done, bro deserve this kind of bad luck. Well, I've made one or two mistakes, but this is just too much. I never expected things to get out of hand like this. I'd, my life was difficult before. It just got 10 times harder. I tried my possible best to keep him from knowing the truth, but guess what, guy? My best wasn't enough. A lot has happened and I don't even know where to start from. You guys remember me saying I cheated on him, right? Well, it's true. I actually cheated about two months ago with a guy I met at the club. I recognized him as an old friend of mine and after several secret dates, we hooked up twice. It was initially my way of just letting loose and trying to get out of the marriage bubble. I just wanted to see how things would go if I broke loose a little bit. I've realized that it was a very big mistake. I thought John, the guy I hooked up Maith, would be the perfect person for that because he didn't live here in Canada. He just came to visit his family before going back. It was a one month trip and he returned about a month ago. I forgot all about him and I thought I'd never see him again. It was nothing emotional because I just wanted to feel the exciting spark of flirting and having a casual relationship. That's why it really hurts me right now to know that after everything, I still wasn't careful though. I blocked John immediately he left for Florida and he's not tried reaching me ever since. But just give days ago, I got a call from him. Yes, I got a call from the same guy I cheated on my husband with. I wanted to break my phone when I realized he was the one that called. Of course, he used another phone number since I previously blocked him on the other line. I thought it was someone else calling, but it turned out he was the one, and he called to inform me that he's already in Canada and would like to see me again. Of course, I blocked him immediately because I didn't have any reason to keep on talking to him. I'm trying to win Black Neil, so I don't want to get caught up in anything that could jeopardize my chances. It's already very hard, and Neil had been giving me a tough time. Hmm, I have a lot to say about Neil too. Where do I even start from? It's just so much drama that I actually want to run away and never come back, but I can't. Why? Because I'm broke and helpless. This situation has really taught me the importance of having my own money as a woman. Now, I told you guys I wanted to win Neil back, right? Even though it looked like an impossible mission, I put the divorce papers aside and decided to dedicate time to show him that I could change. Of course, he's still unaware that I cheated. All he knows right now is that I talked trash about him and announced that I was tired of the marriage. 
so to him, HD might feel like I just got frustrated. So I started taking care of the house and bring a good wife, even though he refused to look my way and hardly came home at night. I barely see Neil nowadays, and since he moved my things to the guest room, we hardly even meet. He's cut all ties with me, even though we're staying in the sand house. He doesn't eat the food I cook. Sometimes I start crying in front of him just to get his attention, but he never cares. He's so heartless and stuff that it hurts me. He doesn't look at me twice when, when I apologize over and over again. And I'm staring to believe that he knows more than he should, and that's why he's so angry with me. What if he knows that I actually cheated on him? No, it's not something I want to happen at all. That would mean that we're really going to get divorced. I know Neil and I'm 100% sure that he'll never forgive me for cheating. Neil is not that kind of man, and there's no excuse I'll give to him that will ever validate my reason for cheating on him. That's why I feel so angry right now. Why do I have such a bad luck? Why is it that John has suddenly decided to come back? I don't know what to do, and I don't think that John's sudden decision to come back can work in my favor. He's been trying to call me with different phone numbers, and I just had to switch off my phone. I'm literally writing this on my laptop because I cannot afford to turn on my phone. I want nothing to do with John. I'm done with him, and there's no way I'll let him back in my life. But he's making me very scared because he keeps calling. What do I do, guys? I know you all are probably tired of me and my recurring problems, but please help me. I'm in the middle of a possible divorce, and my ex-affair partner is trying to make a comeback. This can never be good because even though my marriage is hanging on a very thin thread right now, John's arrival is going to seal everything and ruin it. He's not good news at all, so I need advice on what to do. He knows I'm married, so I know he might try to do something stupid. Please help me, guys. I know you guys don't like me, but please help me. I shouldn't have cheated, but I was tired of being a 24 years old girl who seemed to be trapped. Help me! Update 3. Uh, I used to ask myself, can things get why worse than they already are? Well, I got my answers, and it's not nice at all. This may or may not be the last update to this post. I'm not sure yet. I don't know if I can get more ruined than this. I told you guys I tried delaying the divorce process, right? Well, I didn't lie. I came up with a lot of excuses, even though I was fully aware that it wasn't legally okay for me to delay things past a specific amount if time. If was risky, but I thought I was being smart. Turns out I'm the biggest fool in the room right now. Neil didn't just sit back and watch me try to delay the divorce. He disturbed me so much that I got so tired of everything. He frustrated me and threatened me. HD told me I had no choice than to sign the papers, or else we would have to go to court for a lot of things. I thought they were empty threats. Well, now I know he wasn't joking. When I first got to know Neil filed for divorce, I was very devastated, but a part of me really believed that with time, I could end up winning him back. Well, guy last of me just realized that I was a fool for doing that. Neil had overhead my conversation with my best friend, and he was aware of all the things I said about him and our marriage. He overheard the insults I resigned on him and the way I talked down on our union. Eben, though I caught him listening in on our conversation that day, I never imagined that he had stayed long enough to find out so much. He heard everything I said to my best friend, and he made that clear to me in a recent argument we had. I got angry and frustrated and tried to get him to stop overacting, but I ended up getting embarrassed and talked down on. Neil actually recorded everything I said that day. Yes, he recorded my rant and kept the recording to himself. I wasn't aware and it never occurred to me that he would do that. So it was white shocking when he played the voice recording during one of our arguments. I was so shocked that I didn't dare open my mouth to speak. What would I even say? I knew that there was nothing I could say that would ever make him forget the things he heard. Neil became the definition of what people can an alpha make, and he made it clear to me that he couldn't stay with a woman who had little to no values and could comfortably take in bad about her marriage and husband. According to him, he realized that I was not worth to have bring married to him because I disrespected him, and he couldn't trust a woman like me. I don't really remember everything I said that day, but I do remember hinting that I had a wild night at a club, and those words were also played out in the phone recording Neil played for me. Even though everything that happened that day really made me cold and worried. Nothing worried me like the fact that Neil also heard me saying I had a wild night at the club. Even though that was all I said and I didn't really give any information away, I knew it was very possible that Neil read into what I said. But I decided to forget all about it. 
at the end of the day, it did come back to deal with me. So, even though John kept trying to reach me after I unblocked him and sent him a very long message warning him to stay away, he didn't listen and decided to ruin my marriage. Can you guys actually believe that John told Neil everything? Yes, he did that to me. He betrayed me. I don't know what he was thinking or why he thought that was the best thing to do, but I do hope that his karma catches up with him. He ruined my marriage and trampled on all the corrections I tried to make. I've been worried and tired, yet I kept pushing and trying to make sure I saved my marriage. But thanks to John, all my efforts are in vain, and now I'm undergoing a divorce as a result of his carelessness and bitter nature. He couldn't handle the rejection, so GE decided to do something stupid instead as his way if paying me back. If you're wondering how John was able to meet Neil and have a conversation with him, let me tell you. So, on one of our secret date nights together, I got too drunk and couldn't haul a cab myself, so he offered to drive me home. I allowed him because I was worried for my safety and didn't want to come home alone. So, that's how John was able to know of my house address. I noticed that Neil suddenly stopped being aggressive and started paying attention to me. I honestly thought that I was finally succeeding and he was going to forgive me at the end of the day. Those were the thoughts I had in mind as I foolishly tried creaking my way back into his life, only to be offered public embarrassment. That man is undeniably ruthless and cruel, and I cannot believe that the same man I've tried fighting to keep could do that to me. He deceived me and made me let my guard down just so he could have the last laugh and humiliate me in front of my own family. If he wants nothing to do with me and wants to grab up, GE should do that without trampling on my hand and making me feel dejected. Neil is aware of just how much I respect my parents and shy away from getting them angry. That's why he specifically decided to invite them over to the house and play the voice recording of me and John. He did something I can never forget, and it just proves how wicked he is. He stopped too low by leading me in. He shouldn't have made me look like a fool in front of my own family. He told, he invited my family over, so I made some dishes and set the dining table. But at the end of the day, he played the voice recording of me talking to my best friend and also the voice recording of John telling him that I hooked up with him twice. Neil didn't need to investigate because he had proof in the recording of me speaking to my best friend, where I clearly stated that I had a wild club night. My parents were very ashamed and disappointed, and after telling me how ashamed they were, they left GE House. Neil sent me out of the house that Sunday immediately after I signed the divorce papers. I had nowhere to go and I couldn't consider going to see my parents because I knew that would never accept me under the roof. I spent exactly three hours in the cold night before my best friend came to pick me up from the front gate if Neil's house. He never opened the door when after I knocked several times. I just couldn't believe that John actually came to the house while I was away and told Neil that he hooked up with me. He's the perfect definition of a coward, and I just know that his karma is coming. I might have made wrong choices. Big, I don't think I deserve what I got. I don't think I was eating for being tired of the marriage. I'm a 24 years old woman that got married at 23 after dating the same guy since I was 20 years old. I got suffocated, and the marriage life wasn't as good as I imagined so I freaked out and made wrong decisions. Do I regret it? Yes, I regret cheating, but I don't regret how I felt about the marriage. If I had my own money, I wouldn't have thought twice about it before I left him long ago. I didn't think Neil would end up being so harsh though. I don't know if it's his ego, but he was just too cruel and I'm very disappointed. Bringing my family into it was just not necessary. But at the end of the day, I guess he really won because right now, jobless and my parents don't want to see me. I'm also in the middle of the divorce and I don't know if I might get good spousal support. All in all, I it's been one crazy ride and I still can't believe that just a single phone call with my best friend revealed all my deepest secrets, ruined my marriage and left me broke and divorced. Be careful out there guys. You never really know who's listening. I learned the hard way. Picture a young girl with short hair and an average face growing up in an average family. My family wasn't rich, but they did their best to take care of me. I was bullied as a kid, so I was more of a loner than others. I didn't have many friends, not until my brother came along. His name is John. He was my best friend, and he still is. I was five years old when I held his small body in my hand. He practically followed me around everywhere. When I got into college, he didn't want me to go, and he cried. 
I shouldn't have gone, but I can't change anything that has happened, and I know that. Along the line, I started becoming an extrovert, and I was able to talk more with others. A lot of things have happened since then. I was also able to stand up for myself. I'm married now, and my life was going great, not until Alex, my ex-boyfriend, entered the picture. John didn't like Alex much, but I think it was a guy thing. You're probably wondering why I'm telling you all this, and you don't understand. So I'll start from the beginning. My name is Emily, and I want to tell you a story. I'm not a writer, so pardon me if there's any mistakes, but I'll make sure you'll understand what I'm telling you. This is my story, and I need everyone's help because I don't know what to do. I'll start from the beginning of my married life. I met Stan when I was 21 years old. We were both done with university, and since then, we hit it off. I gave him the cold shoulder at first. He never gave up on me, but the way he acted was different from Alex, not like I'm comparing. He's a really sweet and caring guy. We dated for a year plus, and he introduced me to his family. I loved his family, and they also loved me. It was great. Stan proposed to me, and I said yes. The marriage went smoothly. It was a very small wedding at a small church, and we invited just a few friends and family members. I didn't want something large because I hated being around crowds, and he respected that. I remember telling him the words, I do. To be honest, I was scared of getting married because I didn't want it to hold me down, but eventually I had the courage. We've been married for a year now, and some problem came up. The first one is that I couldn't get pregnant, and I don't know why. Okay, maybe I know why, but we're trying to work on it. The doctor said I don't have enough eggs to fertilize and I don't even know what that means. It's really upsetting because his family and also mine kept bothering me when we were going to get a baby. I don't know how to tell them that we're trying, but I know it's anytime soon. If nothing works, we have no choice but to say something. I would list the other issues as I keep writing. My husband, Stan, and I live in this three-bedroom apartment which he bought, and I'm really proud of him. He also has this job that he's doing. I can't say where, but all I can say is that he's a lawyer. From someone who came from a very average home, I would say this is a huge job and I can't stop bragging about it to my friends. I also have a teaching job. I teach kids in kindergarten, and I have to say that it's a really fun thing to do. I really want kids of my own and we're still trying to figure something out. Now, picture a Wednesday evening where the sun rays are shining since it was summer. My friends came over that evening for our little book club that we do. I love reading books, and I also met others who do. There are three of them. There's Sarah, she's the nerdest in the group, and she's fun to be around. There's also Tracy, who is the hottest in the group, or at least the other friends say that. And the last one is Anna. She's the clown of the group because she makes everyone laugh. You can say that I'm kind of in between everything, and I love myself for that. It was my day off from work then because I was a bit of a part-time teacher. I only go to work on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, so Wednesday and Thursdays were my day off during the weekdays. Stan was at work that day and I was having fun with my friends. We discussed a lot of things. It was already late, so they told me bye and I escorted them out. I heard my phone vibrate and I thought, who would be calling me right now? I didn't hear it vibrate anymore, so I figured out it was a text. I don't receive texts except for my mail concerning a work-related thing, so this was surprising. When I checked it, it was from an unknown number. I was very curious now. I opened the message and I was shocked. The message was from Alex, my ex, who I hadn't heard from in more than a year. He didn't even come to my wedding, not like I was expecting him to. I knew this was him because the text he sent was, Hey M, it's Alex. I don't know if you still remember me, but hit me up if you do. You might be thinking, I know many Alex. Or maybe you're not, but the point is that he's the only one that calls me M. I was wondering how he got my number, considering I didn't think he'd have it with him. And before I could even think of texting him then, my phone crashed. There's another story for that. I met Alex when I was in college. I was a freshman and he was a sophomore. He was this proud person who I didn't like at first. He assumed everyone was in love with him because he was this handsome guy and I didn't like it because he was right. And most of my friends had a crush on him and pushed themselves on him. I tried my best to ignore him every time, but for unknown reasons, he kept trying to come closer to me. I noticed this at first, but I tried to ignore it. Perhaps I was just overthinking it. I figured it out when he came to me in person trying to start a conversation with me. 
but I only walked away. I didn't want attention to myself, and I intended to be very low-key, but he was trying to make things worse for me. He came again to me, and I spoke my mind to him. I asked him why he was trying to talk to him when clearly there were other girls that wanted him, and he only scoffed. He talked about how he didn't care about others, and he's been watching me from afar. I laughed because that was creepy, but I still didn't believe him. He tried getting closer to me every time, by talking to me, walking with me, and even telling everyone that I was his very good friend. Each day, it looked like the girls around hated me while my friends showed that they were jealous. A month had passed and Alex asked me out. I turned him down at first and he never gave up. He told me he liked me and wanted to date me. I didn't believe him because boys weren't trustworthy, especially not in college. Yet Alex didn't give up and he kept trying to go out with me, but I said no. There was a day where I finally said yes and agreed to go out with me. He looked so excited about it and that made me smile too. I asked him where we would be going and he said he was going to come pick me up at home. He knew where I lived since he walked home with me sometimes. I told my mom and dad about the date and they smiled. I was 18 then, so they said they would let me go on the date with him. I did everything to look extra pretty for him. I didn't completely like him, but maybe I did feel something for him. He came over and he was amazed when he saw my short hair let down even when I usually packed it up in school. His eyes also scanned my blue dress that I wore. I hoped it wasn't too much. I scanned him too and thought he looked really good with the black suit he wore. At first I hoped my dressing wasn't too much, now I was thinking I didn't dress well. He greeted my parents and they investigated him before they let us go. We laughed at that because his voice was shaky throughout. I apologized to him for the pressure they were putting on him. John was also around, but he just glared at him, and it was funny because it made Alex uncomfortable. We went to his car, and he opened the door for me, just like a gentleman. I was honestly delighted by that. He also complimented me, which took me aback. He had given me compliments, but not as sincere as this. Alex took me to a fancy restaurant, which was my first time there, coming from an average family. I thought dates were burgers or pizza places. That night, Alex and I discussed a lot of things. I found out things about him. He told me he was an artist and I was amazed. No one knew about that except one close friend that he trusted them not to tell anyone. The fact that Alex had a hobby like that was what surprised me more. We ordered some food and even the food was fancy and tasted good. I asked Alex to show me his art and he brought out his phone and showed me some that he snapped. I remember one which was a little girl holding a flower and it was something I'd never seen before. It was a unique drawing and he had talent. I also told him things about me, about my family and where I come from. I asked him when he started liking me and he said, it just happened. My first kiss was with him and it was a blissful memory. The night was over before we knew it. I hated how the night ended so quickly because I wanted to spend more time with him. He took me home and I told him bye. The next day was almost the same as every day, except this time I accepted Alex and everyone knew we were dating. This went on for almost a year before things changed. He told me he wanted to talk to me. I was scared because of the tone with which he said. I was thinking if he was fed up with me and wanted to break up, I wouldn't be surprised if it was that. But what he told me was different. He said he was going to travel out of the country to pursue his studies in art. That was a great thing to me because I remember asking him if he had any plans since he was great at it. I knew there was something more with the way he looked at me and I feared that I knew what it was. He told me he had to break up because he couldn't have a long distance relationship. I remember begging him not to, that we could work on it. I also remember telling him that I liked him so much and I wanted to have something with him, but he kept turning me down and said he couldn't work out. We maintained distance then and I was pissed. I was angry at him but more at myself because I wanted someone and the person didn't. He tried talking to me sometimes but I didn't want to hear anything from him. He left the country some days after and he didn't even say goodbye. I was pissed because he had my number and he couldn't call. I also had his number but I couldn't give up my pride to text or call first. Around that time my phone got damaged and I lost all the contacts. I didn't think I'd be hearing from Alex. Well at least, not until now. I was still looking at the message and contemplating whether I should reply back or not. I did what my instincts said, and I replied to him. 
I was hesitant and walked around wondering if he would text back. I was thinking maybe he texted me by mistake and my silly mind replied to him and it was probably a joke. My phone vibrated after a few minutes and I immediately checked it. His message read, hey, it's been long. I know it's weird that I was expecting his text, but it didn't mean anything. I just felt glad that I meant something to him and he still remembered me. I should have stopped texting him then, but a part of me wanted to talk to him, so that's how it started. We kept texting back and forth each day. Alex informed me about lots of things. It was all through texts, but I know we shared a lot of feelings too. He informed me about how his study in arts went well. He asked me things about what I was doing and about my career. I thought about whether I should lie at first, but I couldn't because I love my husband. I told Alex that I was married and he didn't reply. I was thinking maybe it was a bad idea, but my mind changed when he texted me back. He told me it was great that I was married and he hoped I was happy. It didn't sound sincere to me when I read it, but I left it at that. It's been a week since we were chatting and everything was going great. He asked me where I was staying now because he wanted to come visit. I was against it, but it didn't seem bad since it was just an old friend who's also an ex. There was just one problem and it was that Stan didn't know. I didn't know if I should tell him because it was concerning my ex and he knew all about our past. I was looking for something to justify what I was doing. I tried telling myself that there's nothing wrong in texting an ex. Alex and I kept texting, talking about life and sharing more things. I made a mistake one day. I still didn't see the use of telling my husband about him since it was just Alex and I. I was chatting with Alex one day and Stan asked me why I was always on the phone. He knew I didn't text much, so it looked weird to him. I don't know why I lied and told him it was nobody. I left my phone for a second to go to take out the trash, and when I came back, I saw my phone in his hand. I became angry, and I don't know why. I think one of the reasons is because I was wondering why my phone was in his hand. It meant he didn't trust me. I was also angry at myself because I knew I would have to tell him the truth. He looked at me and I asked him what he was doing with my phone. He said a call came in, but he had a question for me. Who was Alex? He knew about my ex, Alex, but he wanted to confirm it was him. I asked him why he was looking at my texts, but he didn't answer me. Can you believe that? He went on with the questions and I told him the truth about how it was my ex. He frowned and shouted, asking about why I would be texting my ex. I told him it was no big deal and he should stop making it sound huge. He was exaggerating. I mean, it's normal to text your ex, right? I also argued with him that it wasn't me that texted him first and he was the one. It's just a longtime friend of the past. Yet Stan kept overreacting, saying he texted for a purpose, but I don't believe that. He told me to stop texting Alex, but I don't want to. Is that bad? Imagine how much he would react if I said he wanted to visit, though I don't want Alex coming between Stan and I. I collected my phone from him and went out for a walk. Stan kept telling me to come back because we were still talking, but I didn't want this conversation to keep going. I needed to clear my head. I don't know what to do right now because I'm stuck. Should I keep texting with Alex? It's not like he said he wanted to go out with me or anything. Even if he says that one day, it wouldn't bring any harm because we were friends. Or should I not text him anymore and listen to my husband? What if he truly has a purpose like he said? My mind is all jumbled up right now, so I need advice on what to do. Please help. Comments. One, you Reddit user one. What's wrong with you? I mean that in the most absurd way, because why would you want to choose an ex over your own husband? You do love him, yes? Something tells me that you don't. It's best if you think well on it because he probably deserves someone better than you. Why did you keep it secret from him in the first page? if you had nothing to hide. Two, you Reddit user two. You Reddit user one. This is a tough situation, so don't be too hard on her. She came here because she wanted advice, so stop judging her. Emily, I believe you should take time to calm down and think well about this. Your husband may be right, it's not a normal thing for an ex to text you just to greet you. He also says he wants to visit. What normal person would want to visit their married ex? You should have a deep talk with Stan and tell him all about these, especially your feelings. You two sound like you have a great and special marriage. It shouldn't ruin so easily. 
three. You read it, user three. Why is no one talking about Alex? I'm only seeing talks about Emily and her husband. Hello, there's literally an ex here. Who's the problem? I believe Emily should contact Alex. You two have only been talking through texts, and you also don't know much about him. All you know is that he's in the city and he wants to meet you. So don't do silly things like keeping things from your husband and talk to him about it. So you two will be able to solve this issue. Talk to Alex. Four. You Reddit user four. Something tells me that you're the problem. Women never appreciate something good in front of them. Instead, they want the good thing they had in the past. You should fix this and don't let your marriage get destroyed. Update. It's been days since I had an argument with my husband. I tried talking to him, but he said he didn't want to talk to me till I did something about Alex. I also read the comments. Wow, there were some really mean ones, but I realized you guys were right. I was the problem right now. I love Stan, and even though Alex was a past thing, I still had a little bit of feelings for him. But this was only because he suddenly wanted to come back into my life. I talked to John, my brother I talked about in the beginning, and I told him that Alex was back. He sounded furious over the phone, and I told him the things that had happened. He said Alex couldn't come back and try to pry into my life when I'm finally happy. I, say that. I talked to my close friends, if you still remember them, the ones from the book club. They also gave me some good advice like you all did, and it was to communicate with my husband. I begged him to talk to me. He finally agreed and he asked me who I made up my mind on. Was it him or Alex? I shook my head and held his hands because that was an absurd question now that I heard it. I can't believe I wanted to destroy my marriage because of someone I felt something for before. I apologized and Lee told Stan I chose him over and over again and everything's normal now. The only problem remaining was Alex. He kept texting me and asking when we were gonna meet, but I tried my best to ignore him. You're thinking why I didn't block him, but I didn't want to come off too strong, although that probably sounds like an excuse. Alex began calling me because he noticed, but I didn't answer. The phone calls became more too. Stan went to work one day and it was on one of my days off when Alex called in. I answered it after staring at it for a few seconds and I heard his voice. It had been so long since I heard his voice. It sounded deeper and different than the one I'd heard. It's been three weeks since he texted me, and I was just hearing his voice. But this time, I didn't feel the emotion anymore. I'm happy about that because I wasn't so sure. I didn't want to be attached to my ex while being with my husband. Alex said hi over the phone, and I answered him. He said my voice has changed, and I said the same. He asked me why I didn't text him anymore and why I was ignoring his calls, so I told him the truth. I told him Stan and I were not comfortable with it. I didn't bother going into any further details because it was none of his business. I told him not to bother calling me anymore. He protested at first, saying he didn't see anything wrong in a friend calling a friend. I told him he didn't need to see that, but he just needed to know. I did ask why he suddenly texted me one day, and he told me the truth. He said because he missed me and missed what he had. He told me he felt disappointed when I said I was married. That made me cringe in a way, because was he expecting me to wait for him and accept him once he was back? It's been three years since I met Stan, and meeting him changed my whole life. I feel happier with him. Nah. Anyways, like I said, I told him it didn't matter and he should stop trying. He apologized to me and the call ended. Once Stan came back, I told him everything that we discussed and what had happened. I promised him I won't ever let anything come between me and him because I love him. I'm happy I got married. We also discussed more things about us going to the doctor concerning the pregnancy, or we might just adopt if nothing works. Thanks to everyone here that gave me all of this advice and helped me save my marriage.